Welcome back to Pixel 2022. And now I have Derek Curry and Jennifer Gradecki, and they're going to speak about their projects, hopefully, going viral and Boogaloo Bias. So what would you like to speak about first, guys? Maybe going viral, because it's a little sure. bit older project. Mm -hmm. That's a good place to start. Sure. You want to give a pitch? Sure. So Going Viral is a tactical media project that allows... Uh, viewers to share videos that are algorithmically generated of influencers, celebrities, and politicians that have previously spread misinformation about the coronavirus. And the videos feature these influencers actually countering the misinformation that they've spread online, allowing participants to intervene in the infodemic that has developed alongside the pandemic. Fabulous. Yeah. And so the, the videos themselves are generated using a, a conditional generative adversarial network um, that uh, creates an image from a map of another image. Uh, and this is the same technology that's used in deep fakes, uh, except unlike deep fakes, we're generating the entire frame of the video and we're not doing any post-production, which, which makes the, the videos themselves seem very glitchy and stops them from being labeled as deep fakes when they're posted to YouTube so that they're not they're not taken down. Uh, it's also similar to the technology that's used for content recommendation algorithms. So that's another reference we're trying to make is how these uh, neural networks are used to recommend uh, videos or, or news stories to people who've read other news stories or seen videos that are similar and creates this sort of uh, echo chamber or sometimes they call it a filter bubble of information. Yeah, and another um, dimension to the glitchiness of the videos is we really wanted to foreground the constructed nature of information on social media as well as celebrity. Do you think that you came up with this idea before the pandemic, but then it just cemented the idea in your head? So was it purely from COVID-19 mm -hmm. and everything that you thought, hang on? It's a good question. We were definitely interested in doing something about filter bubbles for a long time. And it was really the process of doom scrolling during the pandemic and seeing all of these conspiracy theories developing out of the vacuum of information because, you know, the um, information coming out of the medical community was so much slower than what was happening on social media. So people were, you know, understandably sharing whatever information they could. It just ended up being um, sometimes extremely absurd stories like Bill Gates created the coronavirus to implant microchips into people to track them or somehow 5G networks cause coronavirus. Um, so there was an interest previously prior to the pandemic, but um, the specific iteration of this project was of course very much inspired by what was happening at the time. We're also just working with neural networks mm -hmm. um, to, to understand them and their, yeah. their applications in commercial technologies. And, and so we had been generating images and, and videos with them, but there's this question of like, how do we do this in a way that can, you know, make the connection to people um, with, with the, the, you know, the technology that they're interfacing with every day? That this is one idea um, that, that came to fruition. That's great. And how has your life changed in the last sort of 12 months, both as artists, but also in general? I mean, one big change has been being able to travel again. I think that's been <laughs> really rewarding for us to be able to meet people, go to the events. So it's not just these online experiences, which are you know, not quite the same. Um, but I mean, I think our work in general <laughs> has ended up responding to different crises. We also responded to the, um, financial crisis of 2008 by making work about it at the time. Um, so I guess that's more of a, um, something that hasn't really changed. There's some things that are, are pretty similar that we have this tactical response to these crises that happen. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to add to maybe things that have changed. Um, it, it hasn't changed as much as we had expected. Uh, we, we also, during the pandemic, we moved, uh, to, to a new place. Um, see, I, I'm 
I just went up for 10 years. So there's just, there's other stuff that were, was already in motion that continued on. And I think that helped give us a little bit mm -hmm. of stability to have these like problems or, or situations that, you know, we're still working on in the same way. Mm -hmm. And so tell me all about the unregulated use of facial recognition technologies in a uh, Boogaloo bias. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. Start. Uh, it's up to you. Do you want me to start? I can start if you want. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this project is um, lampooning the use of facial recognition by law enforcement agencies. And um, of course, it's highly unregulated in a lot of parts of the US and other countries as well. And we found that police are engaging in what some people sometimes referred to as brute forcing, where in the absence of high quality images of a suspect, law enforcement agents will sometimes feed in images of celebrities that a suspect was known or said to have looked like. So we built a software system um, and a spoof company around this practice of brute forcing facial recognition. I don't know if you wanna go into more details. Yeah. I Boys or... well, 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 what's interesting about it is the situation sort of arose. It's it's a very like commercially driven uh, situation where there's uh, companies that have developed relatively accurate facial recognition technology for law enforcement applications. And so they market it as, you know, has this threshold of accuracy and, and they sell it to law enforcement. Of course, this technology is developed within a laboratory setting where they have, you know, controlled environment and multiple high quality images of the person they're trying to recognize. So law enforcement agencies um, buy this technology and they realize that what they have is a grainy CCTV image from a camera that was placed up high, you know, bad angle. And so, but they still have this technology that's supposed to help them and it supposedly works really well. So they, they just started experimenting with putting things other than an image of the suspect <laughs> into it and uh in in some situations it actually worked uh, so um, a news story that that we came across was of uh the new york police department using a photograph of woody harrelson uh, to catch a man who had stolen Not woody. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then there's some athletes as well that they that they use and this this is from you know first or uh uh um, accounts from people who were witnesses. They say, well, he kind of looked like Woody Harrelson. It's like, well, let's use Woody Harrelson then. Um, but this is obviously, you know, just, just at the face of it, a terrible idea. You can't use images of someone else to find a person. Like that's just, mm -hmm. you know, not, not a good approach. Um, this, the specifics of the project itself uh, have to do with uh, meme culture and a group of anti-law anti enforcement militia in the United States uh, that calls themselves the Boogaloo Boys. Um, and they took their name from this uh, campy 1984 breakdancing film uh, called Break Into Electric Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. um, and the film became a meme because it, it was known to be uh, just a terrible sequel. And so uh, people on the internet started referring to bad sequels as Electric Boogaloo which eventually became um, Civil War II Electric Boogaloo. Um, and for this particular militia. Yeah, yeah for, for this militia. And so they're accelerationists. They're, they're a group of people who almost all have military training. They're coming back from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So they know how to use automatic weapons. And they, they think that the, the United States is headed for another civil war. So they're trying to accelerate the process so that they can get to what whatever's after that, which they think will probably be better. Um, and so they're present at both right wing and left wing uh, rallies, um, which made them a great candidate for the, the uh, or, or great subject matter for the project. Um, because in the project, we're surveilling footage of right wing and left wing protests looking for uh, Boogaloo boys by using a facial recognition corpus that was trained on images of the characters from that film, Break Into Electric Boogaloo. Yes, every match in the system is a false positive because you know it's looking for these movie characters in um, you know contemporary surveillance footage. And there's also an interactive component that um, viewers can participate 
in um, both online and also, you know, when we exhibit it at festivals and exhibitions. And so people can see which character from the film they most closely resemble. And in the physical space, when um, the, the uh, participant moves, they might actually appear to be a different character. So they get to see how um, you know, the different images can actually create different matches. Of course, they're all false positives, but we also show them the threshold at which um, the similarity is um, um, predicted to be. So they're, you know, a certain percentage um, similar to a particular character. And this was, um, you know, looking at these technologies and the thresholds that they end up using out of the box. For example, Amazon's recognition out of the box, it's set at 80% accuracy, um, which means that you get a lot more suspects potentially, but there's at least 20% um, error rate or false positive rate, which is uh, alarming to us. So we wanted to build a system that would show people how this works in practice. So hopefully you guys might be coming over from Boston uh, to see us. But where else would you be going in the next 12 months with your work? A uh, different direction or more of the same or, yeah. yeah. We're actually starting a new project now. We've been working on it for a few months, um, but it's still in the prototype phase. Um, working with Media Futures, which is a support program in the EU. And it's about disinformation on social media. And it's going to be an animatronic sock puppet um, mm -hmm show where people can actually see and hear the tweets that were spread by Russian internet research agency trolls online. And so the data set that we currently have is focusing on intervention in the 2016 US election. But once we create this um, interactive installation, we can use all different kinds of data sets. So we're currently looking for more data sets to include in it as well. And there's quite a few of them out there that we're starting to find. Very, very interesting. Is there anything you want to add uh, towards anything now? Or um, anything you want to add that we didn't cover? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I can't think of anything specific. But yeah, we definitely are hoping to join you out there and really appreciate the time to, to meet you. Yeah, yeah. When I went to Boston, I, I don't know whether I'm allowed to say on, but I went with Iceland Air. Um, you can stop over in Reykjavik for a few days as well. So ah, first, so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's cool. But I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to uh, give a specific <laughs> airline that I would go with online. So that might be tough. Out. Yeah, <laughs> that might be added. <laughs> but hopefully see you soon. Thank you very much for today. And yeah, hopefully see you soon. See you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>